I'm going to talk about three molecules today or peptides that are released in your bloodstream or your stomach um, or anywhere in your body that have to do with your feeling of hunger or um, a feeling of needing to stop eating or suppressed appetite. So usually humans eat when we are hungry and what actually gives us the feeling of hunger was discovered to be this peptide that's called ghrelin. It was originally uh, thought that it was a uh, factor that stimulated uh, growth hormone release, but it was found that it was highly concentrated in the stomach, and uh, it is released into your stomach when your stomach, uh, sorry, it is released into your bloodstream when your stomach is empty. Um, so your growling stomach, is a, it's a common thing to say, when your growling stomach releases ghrelin, it is ghrelin, growling, growling, ghrelin. And um, if you were to intravenously administer some ghrelin, it would stimulate appetite and food uh, consumption by activating the NPYAGRP-containing neurons of the arcuate nucleus. So we will just put um, activates NPYAGRP uh, containing containing neurons of arcuate nucleus. There's another molecule that's called the colo cholecystokinin. So I'm just going to abbreviate that. I'll write out the whole thing so you can see how it's spelled. Colo or coli cysto CC. Okay. And what it does, it inhibits meal frequency and size if you administer it into the body. Um, so CCK is present in some cells that line the intestines and some of the neurons in the enteric nervous system. Um, it's usually released in response to stimulation of the intestines by certain types of foods, particularly fatty foods. Um, the major action of it is, is a satiety peptide um, that's exerted on to the vagal sensory axon, so the vagus nerve. Um, yeah, so CCK, like many other gastrointestinal peptides, is usually contained within selected populations of neurons within the central nervous system as well. Uh, last, we're going to talk about insulin, which I'm sure you have heard of. Insulin is released into the bloodstream by beta cells from the pancreas. And it's vitally important. It's a vitally important hormone. Um, so what it does is it transports glucose. So glucose is readily transported into neurons. And neurons is actually the only energy that neurons can use. It can't, they can't use energy from triglycerides or anything. They only can use glucose. But glucose transport into any other cells in the body requires insulin. So that means that insulin is important for anabolic metabolism when glucose is transported into the liver, skeletal muscles, and adipose cells for storage. And it's also used for catabolic metabolism when glucose um, is used from the storage sites and is taken up as fuel by other cells in the body. So glucose, uh, the level of glucose in the blood is actually regulated by the level of insulin. So as blood glucose levels, BG levels, increase, um, insulin decreases. And as blood glucose decreases, insulin increases to transport it into your body. So... Um, Insulin release is usually maximal when the food is finally absorbed into the intestines and the blood glucose levels rise, uh, which is during the substrate phase, which I talked about in the previous video.